Welcome to another lecture on this uh, course on simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. Starting this lecture, we will talk about uh, some deterministic signals and uh, how to implement, how to plot them in MATLAB. So, first things first, assume that all of you have some background in signals and systems. So, I will take some knowledge of signals for granted and uh, what we will do here is that we should note that MATLAB. So, two options. So, black colored pen that will. So, I believe you know that uh, the difference between discrete time and yes, time signals. One, you know this difference. Two, you know that computer systems cannot handle continuous time signals. So, we will restrict ourselves to discrete time signals. Computer systems cannot handle continuous time signals. So, we will restrict ourselves to discrete time signals. So, in this lecture, our agenda is fairly simple. We will generate a discrete time sinusoid. One, generate a discrete time sinusoid. Two, plot it as a continuous time function. 3, plot it as a discrete time function, 4, try to get its spectral response. So, this is our four point agenda for this lecture and uh, let us start. So, we will write a script for whatever we are doing. So, I will create write a new script and call it sinusoid. So, I will call it this is the example script. So, we want to generate a sinusoid. So, generating a sinusoid is of the form cos 2 pi f c t or in discrete case it is cos 2 pi f t s n. So, x t is this and x n is this. So, here frequency sampling time or sampling interval this can also be written as cos 2 pi f by f s where f s is the sampling frequency n equals cos 2 pi I call this normalized f n. So, and from our uh, knowledge of uh, sampling theory we know that f should be less than or equal to f s by 2 or f bar should be less than equal to half. So, this with armed with this knowledge let us uh, try to do something. So, first let us generate the samples across which first let us time first let us generate the time indices. So, First, let us generate the time indices. So, say n, I will generate 1, 2. So, we want to generate a 1000 samples. Fine, we generated a 1000 samples and say f norm, the normalized frequency is 0.2. So, generate or 0 0.1, 1, 
note that this has to be smaller than half. So, I generate it to be 0 0.1 or rather 0 0.01 for simplicity and this and then I simply say that x equals clear all etcetera will work all CLC cos 2 pi, pi is an inbuilt command in MATLAB or pi is a reserved word in MATLAB you can directly invoke pi cos 2 pi f n times n and plot n comma x. So, you plot n x and so plot simply plots it and say x label is time and is value x label is time and y label is value. I save this and I run this and it opens a figure for me and time value x label puts a label on the x axis, y label puts a label on the y axis and this is between 0 and 1000. So, I want to change the frequency for example, want to make it 0 0.02, run this again, change the frequency. So, the frequency has doubled now. So, but this is not noticeable. Let me make it much smaller. Now, I have run this and so the frequency as you notice has changed. I want for more time indices, I can say I can go up to 10,000 time indices say or 2,000 time indices, I will get this. So, I am generating now more samples. So, see you generate 2,000 samples. So, but this is a continuous approximation of a discrete time signal. What if I want to plot it as a discrete time signal only? I use the command stem. So, I, in order to plot a continuous time signal as a discrete time signal, I use the command stem and I get these bars, but uh, in order for these to be noticeable, let me reduce this to 100. This, so, this is what I get when I do stem. So, actually this frequency is too small for 100. So, see, this is two complete periods, 1 and two complete periods within 100 samples and uh, this is what stem gives me, fine. So, that said, so now say suppose I want to get both the continuous time and the uh, discrete time representations of the signal side by side. So, what I do is I open a new figure. So, this opens a new figure for me and I copy this, paste this and plot this and boom. I get these two representations side by side, figure 1 and figure 2. Figure 1 is stem, figure 2 is plot and I want them on the same axis, what will I do? That is also something that can be done. So, I hold, I plot the first one, hold the second one and so I remove these and I simply say hold on and I run this and I get the discrete time version first and up over it I get the continuous time version. So, this is how hold works, this is how a new figure works. So, now we will move on to the last agenda item for this day and uh, that is I want to get its spectral response or I want to get its spectrum, I will correct this to get its spectrum. So, obviously, we will take, we will need to take the Fourier transform and uh, for getting the spectrum and MATLAB uses the inbuilt fast Fourier transform algorithm quite efficiently. So, the inbuilt fast Fourier transform is x equals FFT of x. So, this in general for an endpoint signal it gives me the endpoint FFT of the corresponding signal, but uh, you can also specify the number of points that you want in the FFT and say I want stem 
x or since this will be a complex number and so this and int frequency index x and frequency index and magnitude spectrum and I want this in a new figure. So, figure I create a new figure and run. So, this since this is a single sinusoid I get 1 here and a 1 here and everything else is 0 corresponding to that and if I say this is 0 0.01 I will run this and I get this. I will also use the command close all, close all the figures. So, that done and I run this. So, figure 1, figure 2 and say I want I move this frequency to 2 or 0 0.1 and you get you get a faster moving sinusoid in the time domain and the free two frequency edges move closer. So, what if I make this half? So, if I make this half what happens is that you get a single and you sample it, you are actually sampling the sinusoid at the Nyquist rate. So, the interpolation is more like a triangle. So, the natural MATLAB interpolation works more like a triangle and you get uh, samples that are equal to plus 1 and minus 1 alternately. You get this say I make it 0.49 and I get this. This and with this we will end this lecture and in the next lecture we will look at uh, the idea of convolution and how do we realize convolution in MATLAB, fine. So, with this thank you. Thank you.